Hi readers, welcome back to my channel and I have done book calls and book reviews and author spotlights but <clears throat> after tripping over my books yesterday I realized it might be time for a book unhaul. Over the past couple of years I've been putting bags of book by my door that I've decided I don't want to keep but I have yet to take them to the used bookstore um, to trade in and I think I will do that this weekend which will result in another book haul. Anywho, the top two books I know because I grabbed them right off the top but I'm gonna go delve into this bag and let's see what I'm unhauling and why if I can remember why. So the first two books are in the same series that is Good Girl Bad Blood and As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. I loved a good girl's Gu guide to murder. I thought that was fresh and new and I really wanted to enjoy the entire series. I liked Good Girl Bad Blood, but in As Good As Dead, I felt that the character to me she just really had a complete change of personality that did not fit with who I met in book 1. I know that these can go to a good home, some people will love them, but in the end, they were just not for me, even though I enjoyed the first two immensely. Next up is a book called If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier, and honestly, I don't remember this book. I must have read it. Oh, so when her favorite true crime podcast host goes missing, an adrift young woman sets out to investigate and plunge, plunges headfirst into the wild backcountry of Northern California and her own dangerous obsession. Hmm. Yeah. The fact that I don't remember this tells me I can let it go. I do believe I read it. Let me check out the spine. Yep, it's cracked. Um, but it was just not remarkable to me in any way. So I must have read it and thought, hmm, I don't need to read it again. And maybe one day I'll find it out in the wild and I'll buy it again. But it's time to let it move on. Um, hmm. Most of these books I can barely remember, if at all. I remember the Holly Jackson, only because I was completely unhappy with the final book. The next one is Lisa Gardner, One Step Too Far. I think I might have get been um, kind of getting burned out on thrillers slash mysteries. This is one about a young man gone missing in the wilderness of Wyoming and the secrets uncovered by the desperate effort to find him. He disappears the first night of a bachelor party camp camping trip with his best friends and didn't leave a trace. What he did leave behind were two heartbroken parents, a crew of guilt-ridden groomsmen, and a pile of clues that don't ask add up. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just drawing a blank on this. It's like, I know I read it, or I could have DNF'd it, but nothing. I've got nothing. And if a book leaves me feeling nothing, Usually when I've read something, even if I don't remember anything about it, I get a feeling about it. I either like it, or I get a bad feeling, like that final Holly Jackson, or I don't remember anything. If I don't remember anything, it's not worth keeping. Again, I could find it in the wild again sometime later and buy it and love it. That actually happened to me with a Grady Hendrix book. Next up, The Girl Who Survived by Lisa Jackson, another mystery thriller. I must have been getting burnt out. Um, and this is before I started, again, tabbing, and there's nothing in here. Um, oh, I do remember this, I think. Um, <clears throat> the survivor of a brutal family massacre must uncover the shocking truth about that fateful night that left her forever marked. Okay, she's been the girl who survived. Um, she's searching for some kind of normal. 20 years later, the past has come thundering back. Her brother, 
who was convicted of the murders, had unexpectedly been released from prison, presses in a frenzy. She's receiving cryptic messages from her big sister who hasn't been seen or heard from since that day. Um, yeah, just, I, again, I think I was getting burnt out because this was just, eh, I do remember it. I vaguely remember the ending, but it's time to give this a new home. Somebody will love it. I don't need to keep it. Okay. I Another one I vaguely mem remember. I really now wish I tabbed more back in here. Um, three went up the mountain. One came back. It was called That Weekend by Kara Thomas. Um, nobody knows what happens. Where are Kat and Jesse? Claire knows the answer to buried someone in her... Somewhere in her me memory, but as she's learning, everyone has secrets. Um, for me, this was just an okay book. I did finish it. But it was just okay. It was not a keeper for me. I don't even remember what I started. It was YA. I usually love YA, but yeah, pass that on to somebody else. This next, next book, I remember fairly vividly, because when I look at it, I get a bad feeling, and I know why. It just was awful for me. It was not for me. And that is Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. I should have gotten rid of this a long time ago. A bride's dream honeymoon becomes a nightmare when a man with whom she's had a regrettable one-night stand shows up. And this electrifying psychological thriller. Uh, misogyny in here. Abuse. I don't have a problem with those things if done right. This was just kind of really out there. And um, there, it just kind of was really out there. And that is all I can say about that without spoiling it. You might like it. I did not like it. The main character's husband was unlikable, she's unreliable, and the former one-night stand is also awful. Here's a good guy's girl to, good guys, good girl's guide to murder. And again, I really love this book, I really enjoyed it. But since I don't want to reread the entire series, it is time to pass this on. I didn't talk about the final two books, except that I did not like the final one. But this one was great. It kicked off to a great start. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh, who then killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about. And five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. But she can't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. She knew Sal when she was a child, and he was always so kind to her. How could he possibly have been a killer? Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. At first, just to cast doubt on the ori original investigation. But sh soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent, and the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in Fairview doesn't want Pip digging around for answers, and now her own life might be in danger. So again, this was a great little book. I'm not going to be able to find any parts, but it's um, capstone project log entries. It's text messages. It's very modern. It was very fun. I highly recommend this YA thriller, not so much the other two. I, I could have ended here and probably should have, but I get excited when I love a book. I do not remember if I finished this one or not. This is The Last House on the Street by Diane Chamberlain, who wrote The Silent Sister, which I think I loved. Hmm. 1965, North Carolina Connection. Ellie Hockley raised to be a certain type of 
proper southern lady, yada, yada, yada. S chosen to spend her summer break volunteer helping to register black voters. And then discovers the fright. I think it just didn't go anywhere for me. 2010. Uh, architect Kayla Carter and her husband designed a beautiful house for themselves. It's supposed to be a home, but then he died in an accident. A fact known to a mysterious woman who war warned Kayla against moving in. Uh, woods and lake are haunted. And Kayla Kayla's neighbor, Ellie Hockley, is harboring long buried secrets. Two women, blah, blah. I think this one just did not get going for me. And I could try again, but why? Somebody, I can give this to a good home and somebody surely will love it. Next up, ooh, nope, um, is Lady in the Lake by Laura Lipman. Again, this was before I started tabbing, so I don't remember. Oh yeah. <clears throat> this was just okay. But it was not something I'd want to read again. No shade to Laura Lipman. It was just a fine read and um, not one that I would go back to and not one that's particularly memorable. In 1966, Baltimore is a city of secrets that everyone seems to know except Maddie Schwartz. Um, Last year she was happy, pampered housewife. Now she's bolted from her marriage of almost 20 years, determined to make good on her youthful ambitions to live a passionate, meaningful life. She wants to matter, to leave her mark. Um, drawing on her own secrets, she helps Baltimore police find a murdered girl, and it was just not that great. It was... felt dated, even though... And I'm not talking about set in the past. This was copyright 2019. Hmm. It, it was fine. It was fine. Okay, last one. I have some kind of feeling about this. I read this one quite some time ago. It was published in 2019 again. 2019 was really... 2017, 2018, 2019, I was trying to read, but I was really struggling, so some things maybe just didn't hit with me, um, and it's not to say anything bad about the books, it was me, I was the problem, but then when I moved into this house, and I had to unpack all my books, I got a passion for reading again. Um, this one is called Lost You by Halen Beck, and I get a bittersweet feeling about this, So, let me tell you what it's about. Um, Libby Reese has earned this vacation. There was a time she wouldn't have dreamed of splurging on a fr frivolous trip with her young son, Ethan. Three years ago, uh, yada, yada, yada. Now Libby sold her first novel and everything finally seems to be falling into place. The first two days of vacation are the best that she can remember, but on day three, Ethan disappears. The search intensifies and Libby's initial pa panic turns to dread. The woman on the video was disturbingly familiar as she begins to, su to suspect that the problem isn't that Ethan is lost. The problem is, he has been found. Got, I gotta skip to the end. Yeah, bittersweet feelings about this, and... Just not one I'll keep. But I do have, hey, again, maybe I'll find it in the wild one day and decide that I want to keep it. And that's about ten books. 
So it might be a lot more than 10. I don't know. I didn't count. Anywho, that'll be my first book unhaul. I do have another bag prepped and ready to go over there, but this is probably all the bookstore can take. Right now, I'm going to go to a local used bookstore and not Second and Charles because Second and Charles put stickers over the back of the ISBN code, and I really hate that. Anywho, that is all for me. I will see you next time. Happy reading!